uh, quite, um, what can we say, about, about uh, not even two months ago or a month ago, uh, they were actually um, feeling something in their spirit, although the coronavirus was out, it wasn't very prevalent in America at that time. And that was one of the last services they did before they locked down. And um, I just want to say to you that God, I don't think that is by accident that song was written and that song was done. It is going around the world. It is the Aaron blessing. It's the blessing of the high priest. And I just want to say to you guys today, as we continue on and as we go on this journey, that he is for you. Um, if you want to really understand the message of today and i'm gonna kind of go into details i don't know if you can see me am i am i yeah i'm there um on the message of today is all about where we are at this time and i'm going to give a little bit of a testimony i wasn't sure but when peter asked me to come i have literally just recovered and my mother from about two weeks of fighting a very heavy virus um I was coughing, I had a temperature, something was trying to um, break into my chest. That's the only way I can explain it. I've never, I've never actually experienced anything like that. We in England at the moment are not testing unless you go into hospital. So I don't know, I'll get an antibody test. But what I will tell you is when you have an 85 year old mum in the house at the same time who had symptoms before me, you need God. <laughs> you need God. With everything that was going on, with the news reports and everything that was going on, I knew I really needed God. And at that moment, I didn't go to, I didn't even ring anyone to pray. I just went into my room and I prayed all night, all night. And I said, God, what's happening? Are we going? Are we staying? <laughs> what's happening? And you might think, well, why did you say that? Because I knew something very different was about this Thing that I was experiencing. It definitely was coming from the pit of hell, but I could also feel the, the heaviness of what it was we were fighting in the atmosphere. So that night, and I'm going to share this, this is the first time I've shared this, I'm not share this anywhere. That night, God spoke to me two things. Number one, I, I wasn't really fearing for my life. I didn't particularly think, oh, I'm going, but I was concerned for my mother. And at that night, God spoke to these two things to me. Number one, stand on your faith. Stand on your faith. And number two, he said this thing that comforted my heart, but later on reflection, I had to rethink about this. He said, your mom is not going on this ship. So I knew immediately that my mom was going to be okay. And we had, uh, I mean, I, it took me a week to be able to breathe properly and speak. I, I couldn't really speak. I was losing my breath. Um, I tried to do a, ra I do a radio show and um, tried to record. It was very difficult. It took me about 10 days before I could really get uh, myself together. I had isolated myself from mum in the house and I just was very, I didn't know what it was. So I just had to take the precautions because in London, unfortunately, it's very prevalent. And all I can say is one last time, I woke up on the, maybe the 10th day and I couldn't breathe. I woke up unable to breathe and I have never experienced that in my life. I was literally gasping for breath and I just felt God say, stand up and shake it off. And I began to pray, couldn't speak. So I began to pray in my spirit and it went. It literally broke in that moment. From that moment, Everything has been getting better and better. My strength has gone back. My mom has totally recovered fully. She got a lot of other, she was fainting, passing out. But for us here in the UK, it was worse to send her to the hospital. I didn't want to send her into an environment which could have been even more dangerous. So I had to really trust God with everything, with my life, with my mother, with everything. I'm an only child and I, I, my family lives in America, so I didn't have anyone close. So I just want to say this to you. I look back and I think, wow, well, how could this have happened to me? How could this have happened to me? You know, no plague shall come near our dwelling. And we're praying so many prayers. But I want you to know there's things that are happening in the world today that God says he is the fourth man in the fiery furnace. There can be times when we actually are in a place of trouble. But I want to say this. You're the first people I'm telling properly. I would tell a little bit on radio, but... I just want to say to you, God assured me 
I knew that me and my mum were coming out of this. And when I came out of this and out of the situation, I realized this war that we're fighting is a serious, serious attack from darkness itself. God, it, God absolutely will work it together for our good. But all I will say to you is in this context and in everything that we're doing, there is something called the Passover. So oftentimes people might use the Passover and say, well, the plague will not come near my dwelling. Well, the plague came in a sense, uh, attacked me, but it could not succeed. It could not do what it was sent to do. And even on my mother and on my life, I, I woke up on that last, the last day I woke up, I, will, I can say this and share this openly with you. I had a word in my, first word I heard in my spirit when I woke up and I felt very strong that day is I heard your faith has made you whole. Because I came to a place where I had to totally trust God for life itself life for my mom, life for me, everything. Everything was not secure. There was nothing to lean on except God. And I want to tell you, my dear friends, he was right there. There was only one time I can say I had a fear panic. I didn't know if I had a fear panic. I don't normally get them, but it, I got this panic in my heart. I was like, oh my gosh, my mom is fainting. Think what is, I've got no one. I, I'm isolated. I can't go out the house. I can't let anyone in. And God literally overshadowed me. And I can say the Holy Spirit sat on me. <laughs> it was the most amazing encounter. I can honestly say I've had many, many in my life where he overshadowed me to the point of like a massive hug saying, I've got you, Madeline, I've got you, I'm with you. We're gonna get through this, we're gonna get through this. So I don't want you to say, oh gosh, it's coming, but you asked me and I'm the first time, <laughs> the first time I've, I've shared this, but I felt because this Wednesday is going to be Passover. And I wanna share something about the Holy Spirit because it was the Holy Spirit that really, really, really spoke to me during this time. So I really want to share a, a, a bit about the Holy Spirit, but I, I want to bring us into the context of where we are. Um, here in London, it's been unbelievably crazy. Um, I don't know what it's like in Boston. I know New York is crazy, but we have had three generals of three major churches pass away in three days. Um, Bishop from Church of God of Prophecy, his assistant, um, a mother, her daughter. I mean, I can actually name about 15 people that I know have actually passed away. It's blown my mind. Um, others of us have recovered. We saw Prince Charles recover. We're believing for Boris Johnson to recover. So this is a war that is something else, something that we have never encountered or experienced in the earth. But this is why I want to come to Passover. Because when I look at that, I can't understand it. I mean, these are people who's, who, whose lives have been a blessing. There's a particular bishop, there's the great blessing to the kingdom of God, and he's passed away. So can we say, is God not there? Can we say, what happened? Can we say these things? Well, God began to reveal to me, by the way, Peter, what I do in Nation to Nation is the Hebraic roots teaching. It's actually my teaching side. And um, I often unpack the Hebraic roots. I travel a lot. I do Passover every year. I minister in churches and different things. And when I, God first gave me the title, Nation to Nation, the Passover, I, 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 I thought, wow. And God began to show me that in coming years, in coming times, it's going to be more important for us to stay close to God because as the end times come, things will stir on the earth which maybe, you know, it's not like the end tomorrow, but we know there are the groanings and, 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 the, and the travailings of the things that Jesus told about in Matthew 24. So when I got to this understanding of the Passover, you look at the book of Exodus. So oftentimes in our life, we, we see, you know, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really talk from a very spiritual side, so please forgive me. But when we often talk about Passover, we're talking about, or we're going to get the wealth of the Egyptians and we're going to possess the land and we're going to get our inheritance. And absolutely, there's a level of that in Passover. There's a level of Passover. Now, it begins this Wednesday. It goes right over what we call the Easter period and it ends on the 15th 
of April. So what happens on Passover is you have to stay in your house and the blood has to be on your door. And we actually go through the whole bitter herbs and what Jesus shared, the cross, <laughs> everything. But I want you to get the concept of Passover itself. Passover is a transition. It's a transitional moment, a moment coming from one place to another. Many of us who are going to live and we're going to be stronger, like the pastor said, this is going to birth a great faith in us. It's going to cause us to actually have to comfort many people. It's going to cause us have to, to, to dig on the reserves of all our faith to get things through the way that we need to. Because for the earth to go back to where it was a few weeks ago is going to be very challenging. I think all of you as doctors understand that and, and, and understand the nature of this thing. So where are we in the, in the grand scheme of God? So God began to show me that Passover itself is actually a picture of the fullness of the earth transitioning from the corruptible to the incorruptible. So when Jesus comes, it's the fullest Passover that we're ever going to have. We will transcend the earth. Well, I don't believe we're there, that, yeah, there yet, but I had to acknowledge that when God spoke to me about the ship, that my mum was not going to be on this ship, I realized there is a harvest of some people going to leave us during this time. And, and may God give us all the grace that all listening to my voice, it shall be well with you. But what's important for us to understand is this is what God spoke to me. You see, this is the gospel we preach. The gospel we preach is about eternal life. And the gospel that we preach is about living forever. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. We have focused so much on the things of this world and not understood that the most important message of the book of Acts, of everything that we do, is that he came to give us lachaim, or he came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. Now, how can the passing of a bishop be a more abundant life? It's a promotion to glory. Now, we don't want to hear those things. We don't want to understand those things. But why I'm bringing it up is because I've seen all different dynamics of this. And we're only in the first stages of this thing. Where it came from, I don't know. I'm not going to go into conspiracy theories. And I don't think you should just leave it to God. God knows exactly what happened. But what's really important is our faith has to be as strong as it's ever been in our lives. And my prayer for you as I'm speaking to you, that may you stir up the faith that is within you for your brothers, for your sisters, for your family, for your community. People on the street are fainting with fear because I experience what that feels like. And it's, it's, it's an attack of evil that is horrific, to be honest with you. I wouldn't want anyone. Once you've actually seen all these reports, your brain has to lock in. And only when I worshipped, only when I fixed my eyes on Jesus, I slept and I had peace. If I watched the news, my whole spirit would, because uh, I was fighting something in my body. My body was literally at war for about, about seven to 10 days. But what I will say, and why, why I'm bringing you this word is, my greatest help is from Galatians chapter five, okay? Galatians chapter five, he was right there for me. I cannot express how deep my relationship i've always had a beautiful relationship with the holy spirit but it really became so personal beyond anything i've ever seen really in galatians chapter 5 and it says from verse 18 for those who are led of the spirit are not under the law and then it goes on to talk about the law but i'm not going to talk about that i'm going to jump to verse 22 but the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. And if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glories, provoking one another or envying one another. You know, it's a simple message, a message we teach Sunday school, a message we share. But the Holy Spirit spoke to me 
in these days, the world needs to see the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The world needs to see meekness. It needs to see temperance. Meekness is, a, it is sort of a submission that we are submitted to God. We trust God. We are believing God. We have faith in God. Even if we go and we end going to heaven, we still have faith. Look at Stephen when he was being persecuted and crucified. Well, he was being stoned for his faith. Can we say that God abandoned Stephen at that moment? Can we say that God wasn't there? God was there. And actually he went to heaven in a glorious place because it's the only time we ever see that Jesus stood up to cheer Stephen on because he was preaching the good news and the message of this kingdom. I will say this to you, after we transition out of this place, I think the world is gonna be quite a difficult place than where it was before. But what I will say to you is what God spoke to me in our homes, and I and I and I I'm I, I'm preaching to myself as well, is I live with my mom and we're living in in times where we've got to be with people and uh, do things with people, and meekness and tolerance and long suffering and the fruit of the Holy Spirit is our greatest gift that we can give one another. Our flesh has to come to a place. It says in Revelation 12, and they overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony, and loving not their lives unto death. There comes a place where you trust God with the very life you have itself, to the point that it's up to you, Father. You're not fighting in the context of fighting for trying to hold on to life. God will give you life. The devil cannot take you away. The Bible says no weapon formed against you can prosper. So sometimes it's formed, but it cannot prosper. If it's not your time and God is not asking you to come home, it will be well with you. But God is building up a level of faith in us way beyond anything we've ever comprehended. I mean, I, I could go into details of my goodness, I mean, all the prophecies, my friend Jonathan Kahn is another Messianic believer and so many others were talked about, the massive crashing, the wealth transfer, absolutely happening all over us. For anyone who's into business and knows what to do, wealth is about to change hands in a way that we've never seen on the earth before and it's gonna happen very quickly. But that's not my message today. Maybe another day, <laughs> but that's not my message today because my message today was the Holy Spirit showed me that the world needs him. The world needs him. And how does the world experience the Holy Spirit? Through us. Through us in our homes, through us with our communities. He is yearning to comfort your neighbors. He is yearning to say, I'm here, run to me. I'm your protection. So even in these days of fear and anxiety, the Holy Spirit is the comforter. But how does he comfort others without us being available to be the light of the Holy Spirit? So as we can go into so much of Passover, I can talk about all the roots and everything, and I'd love to, but you see, for me, this shocked me. I never expected myself to this time. I was taking every precaution. I wasn't going anywhere. I'm looking after my mom. I had washing my hands. I wasn't touching anything. I even had a mask and I don't ask me how I got, I don't even know how I got anything, but I did. My mom was going into her, her, her local clubs and I did, and I had to fight it. And by God's grace, and I've got to go say, thank you, Lord. And I say, thank you every day. I'm here to speak this. And I think what it does is it helps us to reevaluate Maybe we've been valuing things a little bit too much. Because I'll be honest with you, if I left, where do, where do my two houses go? I don't even think I've got a will. <laughs> I haven't even put anything together. And it made me realize that in life, we have to be organized. We have to put things together. But what's really important, what, what blew my mind away, and here is where I want to really bring the message for today. And that's why I played that message is no matter what happened from the moment I started coughing 
to the moment that I went through that transition. And I have many testimonies of God's goodness, but I want to share it now. God's presence was so real over my life. I can honestly say I had such an encounter with him. Like I said, with the Holy Spirit, his presence was for you. I want to say this. He's not judging you. He's not condemning you. It's not because of A, B, C, D, E. But in that context, Passover is about cleaning away the leaven, taking out every piece of leaven from our lives so that when the enemy passes over, there's no leaven found in the house. So we speak about the blood, but what is the leaven? Well, we know biblically that the leaven is sin. And how do we get washed we need to be washed in the blood of Jesus. We need to get our accounts right with friends, people that may have offended us, issues in our heart. We need to have a clean heart and we need to, and we need to have clean hands. And we need to, to see that God is able to bring about the change in us. I want to say to you in, in, in the context of life, I think let's not push this time away in the context that God's going to be with us and we're going to get through it and we're all going to go back to normal, but let's use this time to be better people. Let's use this time to improve our lives, to make things better. I mean, I can't tell you how much love I felt from the Holy Spirit. And I want you to understand that you don't earn this love. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you beyond your comprehension. And when you understand how much he loves you, it's easy to do things right because you don't want to, you don't want to disappoint him. You don't want to let him down. And even when you get to that place of love, you start to feel his compassion for people out there, people on your road, people in your neighborhood who are afraid, who are Right now, I, I don't know how the world is feeling when you don't even know if you can go down to the shop. You're touching everything. You don't know what's happening. The press is doing whatever. But the truth of the matter is there is something out there. I don't know where it came from that is hurting us. And may God give us all the wisdom and the grace to navigate. And this is my message for you today. May God help you to navigate your home. May there be peace in your home. May there be long suffering, tolerance for one another, because we're going to be trapped in four walls for quite a while. And yeah, maybe we can go to different rooms. But the truth of the matter is the Holy Spirit is actually healing homes. He wants to heal situations, especially broken friendships and relationships. And the most important thing is that we have the great relationship with him. You know, I was uh, dealing with Passover and we're looking at Palm Sunday. You know, Letty, let when she said that, then when she said that, I was like, you know, it was beautiful, Letty. And she, they were saying, Hosanna, save us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And a week later, they were saying, crucify him. Unbelievable. The change in the same people who were saying he's the king. And the next minute they were saying, give us Barabbas. Don't give us him. And when we look at that, it's because there's, a, there's, a, there's an issue. And, and, and I'm sharing this on a wider angle. But, you know, if it does touch your heart, please remember this. Do you really, really trust him? Do you really, really know him? Because if you really know him and you really trust him, he who began a good work in you is able to complete it. He who has begun, he is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the source of our strength. And these months, because they are going to be months ahead, may we go deeper and deeper and deeper in Jesus. May you know the Holy Spirit as your helper, as the peace that passes understanding just you don't know where finances are coming, but you're trusting God with all your heart. And I promise you, he is going to take you to a good pasture, to a blessed place, 
to a wide and wealthy land. And I just want to say this as we close. May the God of Israel bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace. Thank you so much, Peter. Thank you so much, Leswin. Let's see.